I'm Rob and today we're at the Carnarvon Arms in Whitway. Now the Carnarvon Arms is a Grade 2 listed coaching inn and uh, many famous people have stayed here as well, it has rooms and those people included Alfred Lord Tennyson, Dwight D. Eisenhower and the cast of Downton Abbey and there's a clue to where we're going apart from the title of the video we're going to Highclere Castle and walk around Highclere Park so of course uh, this was the go-to place for guests at the, uh, at the castle that weren't actually staying at the castle from the pub we walk south along the old main road through Whitway it's not the busiest of roads, having been superseded by the A34 dual carriageway, but there's a nice path on the left-hand side of the road. Now this is Forge House on the left. I'm guessing it's an old blacksmith's forge by the name and the, uh, the outbuilding. One of my easier walks to find your way round, both for the pub and for the castle. Don't worry about the sign. The Earl and Countess are actually very, very good with walkers. Uh, there is a public footpath through here. There's also a permissive path that you can use in the summer, several permissive paths where you can walk around things like the, uh, the temple and the lakes. And there's the A34 dual carriageway and Beacon Hill. But the gates is a yellow arrow which points you through this way for the public footpath. So this promises to be a pretty good dry underfoot walk. Uh, as I say, it's very, very customizable. In the summer, you could uh, use the pub and come down into the park. You could visit the house. You have to pay a ticket to visit the house. Or you could use the permissive paths and take a little trail just around the parkland. Um, you could make a, a big loop, add three or four miles on by taking in the Wayfarer's Way in a loop to the south. Or you could do this one, which as I say, is going to be very dry underfoot because a lot of it is lanes and also, like this, the drive to the house. And there's our first little glimpse of the house. And on this walk it will be teasing little glimpses around the hills and through the trees. Now the cedar of Lebanon trees on the park are some of the first to be introduced into Britain coming from the seeds first collected by the plant explorers. Now the parkland screams out Capability Brown. He laid out this park in the 18th century. Although it's been around for a lot longer. It was first recorded in 749 I believe and then it was pass from the Crown to the Bishop of Winchester. Which is probably no surprise because the Bishop of Winchester, William Wickham, seemed to uh, own everything. And off to the right is the Temple Walk and that's open in the summer. It's a summer permissive path but uh, not in the winter I thought. We carry straight on along the drive. It's the castle over on the left. So the footpaths are very well marked. We head right under this very impressive cedar of Lebanon tree. Lots and lots of sheep on the estate and of course it's one of the important income streams for a modern stately home. So probably the most recognisable house in Hampshire, possibly even in the country, Highclere Castle. Built in the 1840s, in that guise, and it's a Grade 1 listed building. The original house was built in 1679 for the first Earl of Carnarvon, if you ignore the vagaries of the British peerage system. This is a former deer park, as I said earlier, of the Bishop of Winchester. Now if you look at the castle and you look at the Palace of Westminster, there are definite similarities. And that's not a coincidence, because it was designed by the same designer as the Palace of Westminster, Charles Barry. Now, the real owners, the Earl and Countess of Carnarvon, their family is much more interesting than the Granthams, the fictional Granthams, ever were. 
In 1907, the fifth Earl of Carnarvon funded an expedition into Egypt with Howard Carter leading the way, famous Egyptologist, to try and find the ancient tombs of the kings. And they found the tomb of Tutankhamun. Now, is there a curse of the pharaohs? Well, some people say there is, some people say it's unadulterated claptrap, unquote. But the truth is, um, it helped to fuel the rumours of a curse when the poor fifth earl died just a few weeks after the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb. Uh, also, I don't suppose it helped the problem that he's buried up on Beacon Hill and surrounded by railings. Uh, it was a common practice in Victorian times to put a tomb inside railings and I suppose he would have loved his parkland and Beacon Hill you can see right over it. The First World War saw the castle being used as a hospital for the war wounded and in the Second World War it took on dozens of evacuees. And the Seventh Earl was very famous for the high clear stud. He was a very good racehorse breeder. And he was the Queen's friend, the one that walked around known as Porgy because of his uh, Porchester title. What is the real curse of being landed gentry in the 20th century, late 20th century and the early 21st century? Well, I suppose it's the weight of history and the pride that having your family own such a large estate and buildings and the people you look after on the estate that's a heavy weight of responsibility and a lot of stately homes were demolished or fell into disrepair after the Second World War. Um, the National Trust took some on, English Heritage took some on, but they were very, very difficult as you can imagine. Imagine trying to heat a place like that. So very clever ways of getting an income had to be devised. And for Highclere, blessed of its beauty, because it's a very, very beautiful gothic looking building, um, I suppose that was its saviour, uh, because the current Earl and Countess um, opened it up for filming of certain things. And uh, there's, there's so many things filmed here, as well as Downton Abbey, that uh, I'll read it off of a piece of paper. So excuse me, so the Antiques Roadshow, unsurprisingly, has been filmed here. Michael Palin's film, The Missionary, was filmed here. The Secret Garden was filmed here. Return to the Secret Garden was filmed here. A Handful of Dust, Spy Master, Secret Life of Ian Fleming, Jeeves and Worcester, King Ralph, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, Jewel of Hearts, A Sense of History, Eyes Wide Shut, The Four Feathers, Marple, Stately Suppers, and the most famous of all, Downton Abbey. So I say, if you want to visit, then uh, you do have to pay for a ticket or Historic Houses members can come, but it's a little bit limited as to when you can come in as a Historic Houses member. Um, there's a great Egyptology exhibition. They do lots of events through the year and obviously the beauty of the castle and the interiors as well. Fantastic, so pop along. If not, if you can't afford it, you don't want to, but you just want to come and have a look, as I say, they're very, very good with their rights of way, lots of permissive paths, there's a map you can download off of the internet, and you can come and experience it that way. Anyway, enough of my yabbering, and uh, let's move on. And here's one of the other permissive walks in the summer. Now again, well signposted, we turn left. Now if you have a dog then um, please note this, I don't think this walk is for you. Now I know cows lying down means rain, does sheep lying down mean the same thing? And here's the cemetery chapel. And cemetery.
So to the left of the chapel runs the footpath. Don't go through into the farm. Lovely spring bulbs coming through on what is a chilly but at least partly sunny and dry March day. Uh, it's beautiful walking through the little cemetery. On exiting the cemetery we turn right. Just a tinsy bit of dampness underfoot here, just enough to make it worthy of wearing your walking boots. Otherwise, as I say, a nice dry underfoot walk. And we carry on through the five bar gate into the woods. It's a beautiful estate with its 5,000 acres of rolling hills and fields and countryside. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm not absolutely certain what that skull is. Possibly a deer. Maybe a fox? Not sure. So as we exit Ivy House Cops, we cross the stile and turn right. And we're soon going to emerge into the village of High Clear itself. So at the end of the field, through the broken stile, to turn right over the bridge. And here we are in the village of Highclere. There's another possible start, the High Clear Red House pub. With a little Saturday morning market outside. There's a couple of new builds opposite the pub. And a bit of tongue in cheek in the naming of them Grantham House and Crawley House. There's a Flexford Close in Chalmers Ford as well, and I know there's a few more about. Uh, the meaning of the name Flexford means a flax meadow by a stream. Now, don't miss the footpath sign on the right. It's just the footpath they're going to take alongside this wall. Now, just as we head through this kissing gate to cross the field, over towards the church, there's a little door in a wall, very secret garden-like. Ah, so it's pheasants in that secret garden, exotic ones. And peacocks. We've got a cattle trough here. Some of you may have seen this trick before, but if you are running out of water in your water bottle, no, don't fill it up from the cattle trough. But at the end, if it's unlocked, which this one is, you can open it. I don't want to go in the water, put my leg there. Ooh. <laughs> you can open it, and there's a bullcock. And you just press the bullcock down, and you just press the water. And we emerge through the kissing gate to walk down to the church. And here we are at the parish of St Michael's and All Angels Church. 
It's a Victorian church, built in the 1870s, possibly on the site of a pre-Norman, possibly Saxon church. I'll have a look, see if it's open. Well, sadly it wasn't open, we couldn't visit. But never mind, fine looking church. And this, of course, is the War Memorial. We're going to take that gate out of the churchyard and follow the lane round the bend. Now, despite the slightly wet patch in the middle through the woods and through the field, say so it's pretty much dry underfoot. You do need a pair of walking boots just for that middle bit. But the rest of the walk now is on hopefully quiet lanes. Lovely to see the daffodils blooming, rich with the promise of spring. Now at this fork we're continuing to the right. I think that's a Gloucester old spot. Not that I'm a pig expert. Handsome beast though. Very much sounds like balls over there. Yep, definitely bulls. Blackford Farm Cottage, very, very pretty. This would be pretty in late May, early June, with the roadies all blooming. Already budding there, look. Yeah, maybe lanes, but it's a very pretty walk. And that's a pretty little property, Headstock Lodge. Oh, there's a nice bit of thatch coming up. When we reach the main road, we're turning right. On the part of the road where these houses and cottages are, over, uh, known as Bottle Row by the looks of it. Again, it's not the busiest of main roads, but there's a nice grass verge to keep to. And for my public transport people, there's a number of buses that uh, stop along this route if you want to start from this side. Now uh, this is an awkward bit so be careful here. Now, at the end of this short drive you can see London Lodge. And uh, it's quite an interesting little uh, place you can rent out for a few days. The bedroom's on one side of the gate and the living quarters on the other, and they provide you with a dolly. It's all part of the High Clear estate. Out of bounds unless, you, uh, unless you've hired it. But that's London Lodge. So cool because it goes out onto the London Road. Which heaven help us, we're still walking along. <laughs> Probably the best time to do this walk is the summer when you can go in the way we went, go around, when you get to the church, turn right instead of left, and then you can follow the permissive paths around. That's probably the best way to see it, I think. The lanes were lovely, but uh, this main road is a bit of a drag, to be honest. So, back over the A34. You can see on the left there is Top Hill Services. We're turning right to head back to Whitway and the pub. Oh, that's like an old boundary stone. Could be a county boundary stone. There's Newbury, of course, is in Berkshire, and Whitway is just in Hampshire. And we're just in Whitway. In fact, there we are. So here we are back at the Carnarvon Arms. We've done six and three quarter, maybe seven miles. First two thirds of the walk, lovely. Last third, main road, not so good. But as I say, it's a versatile walk, you can do what you like with it. 
best done in the summer, use the permissive paths, run up to the estate, around the estate, around the permissive paths, and come back. That would be a, a nice way to do it, I think. Anyway, I am more than ready to go for my lunch now, so follow me. And if you enjoyed the walk, please like and subscribe. Thank you.